Hello everyone and welcome to the Link Podcast with me, Elle. Remember, if you're studying English, you can study this podcast episode along with any of the past episodes as an English lesson on Link. I'll always pop the lesson link in the description of the video. Link is an excellent way to learn from all kinds of content. My favorite thing to do right now is study French with Netflix shows. Super easy to do. All you need is the Link importer. Go to Netflix, find your show, make sure it has subtitles in your target language, click and voila, you have your lesson. I like to then go through the transcript before I watch the show, then watch the show with the subtitles on in French. You can do it with movies and not just Netflix, all kinds of other streaming services as well as YouTube, of course. So give it a try. If you use Spotify, SoundCloud, Apple or Google to listen to your podcasts, remember that we are there. The links are also in the description. And don't forget to give this episode a like, a follow, give us a review, show us some love. We'd really appreciate it. This week, I have a treat for you listeners. I am joined by Canadian novelist Nazanin Hoza. Naz, how's it going? Hi, Ali. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Thank you so much for coming on. So your debut novel, Aria, I just want to tell you first off, I loved, 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 loved. Um, I read it when it first came out and I could not put it down. It was one of those books where I was like, looking forward to going to bed because I read before I go to sleep. Mm. Um, and yeah, I would just be like, yeah, oh, I'm so excited <laughs> to read Aria. And I remember that the uh, I had quite a few pages left until I finished it one night and I had I just had to finish it. So you made me probably late for work oh. one day. So thank you. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. It's okay. We're all late for work sometimes. <laughs> Um, so Arya is a coming-of-age story. The protagonist, Arya, mm -hmm. um, follows her life in in Iran, mm -hmm. primarily yes. in Tehran. Yes. Yes. And um, she is kind of mothered by three flawed women, aren't we all? Mm -hmm. yes, 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 flawed. Of but um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, fantastic. I just want to read actually part of the review, one of the reviews you got from Margaret Atwood, oh, no mm -hmm. less. <laughs> Another amazing, amazing Canadian novelist. So she said about Arya, a sweeping saga about the Iranian revolution as, as it explodes, told from the ground level and the center of chaos, a Dr. Shivago of Iran. Yeah. That must have felt pretty nice. <laughs> pretty, it's, uh, it still hasn't hit me. I still haven't absorbed, yeah. absorbed that. <laughs> I don't think I ever will. Amazing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Quite crazy. So... Congratulations, Thank you. first off, Thank I want to say. And um, yeah, so my first question to you is, I always want to know if, especially when a, uh, a novelist, about a novelist's first novel, is the story of Arya something that was kind of in you, waiting to burst out? Or did you decide to write a novel and then think, okay, well, what story do I want to tell? And it kind of came from there. Oh, that's such a, you know, nobody's ever asked me that question before. Oh, really? <laughs> People have asked, like, is it based on you or, um, or you know, what inspired it? But no one's ever sort of mm -hmm. broken it up into that those two kind of categories. Because mm -hmm. what basically happened was there were parts of it that were inside me from a very young age. Mm -hmm. And then when I then came to realize that I had to write a novel about it, I started writing those those feelings out that I had had since maybe I was five years old. But then I realized that a novel can't just be somebody's sort of feelings and emotions worked out through the page. There has to be structure. There has to be sort of you know, plotting. There has to be motivation. There has to be some kind of form and shape that 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 is a much more of a practical thing and a tangible thing instead of just, you know, whatever feelings you sort of had about life since a certain age, since a very young age. So mm -hmm. then I had to sit and go, okay, well, I have these sort of, this sort of concept, this character, these various people. And, you know, I know that it has to end up here in some way, end up where the ending is and sort of mm -hmm. follow their lives. But now I have to really come up with ideas of how to, in, in a way novelize it and, and turn it into right. a, a structural thing a form and so right. then I had to really 
I guess, put on the real creative hat of, of, of thinking, okay, I, I know these themes are the things I want to explore. Now, how do I create stories around it to do that? So it's a combination of both, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So, okay. yeah, that's very interesting. I, I actually, it's the first time I even thought about it in that way that you just asked. So, ah, okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Good, good, quest- good, good question. Good question. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so... You mentioned the other process of, of writing and like the form. That always fascinates me too. Mm. One, that someone can write something, a novel, period. But your novel, Arya, is, is an epic, yeah. uh, complex tale that like spans, you know, what is it, the early 1950s mm-hmm. to the 80s? Mm-hmm. Early 80s, right? yeah. Yeah, so like how do you even how do you even go about like you did you do tons of research were there like a million different drafts that you had to write and different input from different people like what was the process I yeah I did I did a ton of research um especially for about a year year and a half two period timeline there in the in the middle of writing Mm -hmm. um and I basically the Vancouver Public Library. I would go there every day before work when when you and I used to work together, and mm-hmm. I would hide <laughs> myself in the sort of in the in the in the bowels of like you know old newspaper clippings and like Time Magazine and New Yorker New New York Times and various like per, Le Monde you know per, Parisian mm-hmm. you know, French newspapers of what was going on <clears throat> politically at the time. And then kind of what you have to do with, with research, because you, you don't want the novel to kind of turn into a textbook, you know, like a historical mm-hmm. text. You want it to become a real right. living thing. And so then what you have to do is you have to forget all that research. So you have to oh, I see. Okay. take it in, Ugh. at least for me. I don't know how other people write right. these types of things. And then I had to sort of like push it out of my mind, kind of hope that through some kind of osmosis I had absorbed all of that stuff and then when I had to particularly write the scenes that take take place later on in the novel then I had to kind of go I never did that I don't know that's just you know and I just have to sort of come through and then um yeah and and I'm really interested in in form and structure as well like and and how sort of you know, I, I kind of wanted, there's like, basically, there is a main character and then these three mother figures, but there's, as you know, several other characters. And so how do you, mm-hmm. you're sort of telling, this world is sort of unfolding according to the points of view of all these different people with her at the center, you know, this person is like the mm-hmm. nucleus of, Arya is the nucleus of this, all of that, all, all of that yeah. is taking place. And so the research was there and then you have to forget the research. Then, um when you ask about like how do you write something like epic like that i don't know if i'll ever write a a novel that's that big i I might i mean the novel i'm writing right now i think will be much smaller but you know at least 100 pages or so less um but the only way that i can explain that and because you say you know you don't know how people write novels if you break it down and simplify it, it, it it is possible and all you really have to do, and this may sound strange, but you just write one word after another word mm. after another word without like having right. huge expectations or thinking, looking at it, at it as this kind of Goliath of a, of a, of a task. Of a, of a, right. Of a the entity. obstacle is the way. Yeah, kind yeah of thing, right? exactly. Yeah. And so okay. you write okay. one word and you write another word and you write another word. And you count Mm -hmm. those words. I mean, that's what I do. I sit and I say to myself, I'm going to write, you know, if if it's a really good day, I'm like, I'm going to try for a thousand words. And then you'll sort of see in my, because I usually handwrite before I transfer to to the computer. Um, Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, Not always, but, you know, when I was writing Aria, sometimes I had to do it on my phone on the bus to work. (laughs) <laughs> or to, no. to class you know? <laughs> so I'm like te- no, texting okay. it on my phone t- emailing it to myself but um, <laughs> <laughs> right now I have a bit more freedom so um, I'll, you'll see that in my notebook I've handwritten and then you'll see like on top of the words you'll see numbers <laughs> so I, then I just count it I'm like did I reach a thousand oh, I did I make a thousand and, and so and I don't know if I'm going to keep those 
th- thousand words. Probably thousand. I'll, out of mm-hmm. every thousand words I write, I probably will only keep like two hundred, or if I'm lucky, three hundred. Oh, wow. But that's okay. you just have to, you know, approach it in that way, and then mm-hmm. eventually something arises. You know. Yeah. Did you ever doubt yourself? Um, through the process like ah just scrap this and start a different novel <laughs> oh uh, yeah. I, I never <laughs> I never doubted the idea that it should be a different novel I doubted whether oh. I could ever oh, get it right. done you could do it. yeah and not right. get it done I, I knew that I could like finish the story but then what I doubted mm-hmm. was that it would be any good first of all it would be terrible no one would want to right. read it I think I wrote before I even showed it to anyone to read to give me feedback like close friends that I had chosen I had chosen mm-hmm. a couple of close friends that I thought were really good readers who are also writers and creative people yeah. before I even submitted it to them like the full draft I think I had written it I had written seven or eight drafts by that point and wow. then and then yes. yeah and then when I finally were sold it and I worked with my editor I don't know how many more drafts we did. Maybe two or three more. Yeah. I so did at least 10 drafts. And that's on the low side. Like, there are people who do, like, 20 drafts of a novel. Like, I think I'm on the low... I think that Aria was on the um, the lower end of draft re- rewrites. Yeah. 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 At 10. Wow. Yeah, minimum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have to. But, like, you know, when you say... When you use that number, it's like, okay, out of that 10... Four were huge rewrites. Like, I I mean the f- ah, okay. I, like the first first what the very first draft was like over eight hundred pages, and then I looked at it, I read it, and I cut five hundred pages out of that. Like I just slashed five hundred pages out of that. Then I added oh. I added another three hundred, and I cut two hundred, and then I so do you know what I mean? Those first four drafts were the big 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 things and right. then after that the drafts become then you're like starting to tweak and you okay. rearranging things so you know it varies those those that draft writing it's not like you're rewriting the whole thing on the sixth draft or right fair enough you know did it feel did you know then when the final did you know the final draft was the final draft as soon as it was done was it like ah you know closed manuscript smoke a cigar or whatever you do I don't know <laughs> <laughs> the only reason I knew I didn't really know. I still don't think... I still think when I look back at it, I still think I could have done better and I could have fixed things. No. And, but it was my editor by this point. So I had already gone through the process of like selling it and having an agent. and Right. And then the editor said, this is done. This is done. And she's very... You're done. Yeah, you're done. <laughs> yeah. And she's a very respected, <laughs> in, intelligent, smart person. So you... Oh, that's okay. someone that, who, who has had several successful books. So you go... Um, okay, this person no, knows what they're talking about. I'm just gonna trust her, and right, um, and and M- Margaret Atwood actually, at one point where I kind of thought it was maybe done, Margaret Atwood kind of said, mm, "No, it's not done." <laughs> and so you're like, "Okay." I thought, "Okay, well, if she says so, it's not done. I right, gotta keep you know. yeah." And and so you you pay attention to people who know better, and there there are always going to be people who know better. You never know. Right. You never know more than there are people who've been doing this for so long, and they have gifts that you don't have, and they're not as close to the material, and mm. um, so you listen to them if you're wise. <clears throat> that's wise. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah. that's very wise. Uh, so Arya is set in in Iran, but primarily Tehran, mm-hmm. as I mm-hmm. mentioned earlier, and you are from Iran, yeah. Tehran, yeah, and. You lived there, you were born there and lived there until you were seven. Yeah, right? seven and some, yeah. Yeah. And so, do you remember, of course, there was, I mean, you know a ton more about it. So it was the unrest, there was the Iran-Iraq war, and then there was unrest politically within Iran mm-hmm. while you were right there for those seven years of your life. Do you remember any of that? Yeah, so chaos? Th- there's sort of three unrest situations that took place oh, okay. um, from my birth on. Before, there were other things, but from the time I was born, there were three. One was the revolution, which I was only about a year old when when it happened. So I don't have memories of it, although I'm told that I don't know what 
what what anybody like you're a parent you know this is like but i don't know what parents would be thinking taking a one-year-old out into like demonstrations when there's like mm, yeah. bullets flying and like you know but apparently i was taken out into these demonstrations as a one-year-old you know with like wow. guns oh. ablaze <laughs> oh, <my laughs> so goodness. okay people, i don't think you know you were 80s kids you know we, you, yeah <laughs> they did they just sort of didn't care they threw us out into yeah um so <laughs> So I so I don't have a memory of that, although I'm sure there's subconsciously stuff going on. Um, but the, the the two other unrest situations was the Iran Iraq War, which, for the first few years, uh, kind of happened at the borders, uh, between okay. the two countries. So it happened in desert areas and in, in um, kind of, uh, yeah, lower area by the Persian Gulf going up to the borderlands which was very far from Tehran and very far from the majority of the big cities but okay. then after a few years it started moving into Tehran because um, bombing raids and air raids began like Saddam started bombing Tehran and then of course the Iranians bombed back you know it's like it's not like we were just saints being bombed you know it went both ways it was horrible both ways and I so I was there for that for the for the first few few years of that before we immigrated and it continued on for another three years after my family left Iran uh, although my my extended family was still there it was just me and my parents who left so I, re- I very have major memories of those bombings those air raids and um oh and, and then um there was the other unrest that of course had to do with the fact that um especially in the 80s it's things have loosened a little bit now i'm not not saying it's perfect but they've loosened but in the 80s this new regime which was very theocratic highly religious Mm. authoritarian autocratic um and so it was always it always had a stranglehold on the people you know so average people walking on the streets you know always had to be watching what they did careful what they said because any moment you could be arrested if you said the wrong thing and especially for children like my remember my parents always saying to me just don't talk to anybody don't say anything political if you hear anything if we've said anything about any this is like a six-year-old five-year-old child like being told like careful who you're talking to careful what you're saying um never like say anything against religion never say anything against god and never just because you're living in, in this sort of highly repressive, scary system. It's not as bad. Obviously, there are still problems and there are still violations of human rights and stuff. But, but um, it, it used in the 80s, it was pretty, pretty hardcore because the revolution had just happened. So that new regime was like wanting to hold on to power no matter what. So they were like, you know, right. uh, extreme in, in their reactions to things they're a bit more mellow it's a bit more mellow i mean it's not great but yeah. you know you can you do can you ever yeah. yeah go ahead go ahead no i was gonna say do you ever go back or have you been back yeah since you left? no unfortunately i i haven't there, there was a time when i think there was a window of opportunity for me to go back and i didn't take it um mm. and then when i sort of was writing the novel and it started to sort of fall towards publication. A lot of people said to me, listen, like you may run a risk of some problems because there there are political mm. things in the book and there are sort of yeah. what kind of seem like criticisms where I, I don't know if whether I'm criticizing, I think I'm just sort of presenting reality and I'm letting the reader decide what they think yeah. about what's going on. But some mm-hmm. people said, you know, just uh, you run the risk of something and, and or nothing, nothing might happen. Like I might go, it would be great, it might be fine to see people and, um, you know, enjoy sort of the beauty of the country. But but there's also a risk. There's always that tiny bit. So mm-hmm. I kind of want to, I, I, you know, I, I have to be very careful about how I approach that. Right. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. Um, you mentioned there see the beauty of the country Um, Mm -hmm. I think it was the Guardian review that was written um, the writer said that Iran 
as kind of like a character or Tehran is like a character yeah. and I totally get that it, I felt I've never been I would yeah. love to go one day yeah. but I felt um like I could hear it and like smell it you do you did such an amazing job of uh, <laughs> kind of putting the reader there or, or even even if they haven't been there yeah. you know I feel like I can kind of picture it. And then, of course, this is another great thing after reading or during, I was looking into, you know, Tehran and, and I wanted to see the the mountains. And it's just such a beautiful looking city. It reminds mm. me of Vancouver, actually. Yeah. Kind of the North Van, city, especially, you know? especially North Van, I think. Yeah. I don't know if you... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so tell us then, last question I have for you, tell us about uh, the new book that you're writing. Is can you tell us about it <laughs> or are you, are you sworn to secrecy by your, your publisher? No, the publishers don't, don't, you know, swear anything. Uh, they don't make oh, you okay. swear anything. <laughs> I, I, what I, what I tend to do is I, I, um, I found even with, the with, with Aria, I never really talked about what it was about. Really. I just would tell people, yeah, I'm writing a novel. Um, mm -hmm. it's sometimes it, when you share a bit too much, that inner world that you've created and that, sort of um, Im imaginary thing that's inside you, if it leaves you too soon, um, it might sort of dissipate, you might lose hold of it, or people's reactions oh, okay. might affect your your own ah. thinking about it. So it ha yeah. you have to be very guarded about uh, what you say, I think. Mm -hmm. Protect, protect. Yeah, the yeah. Idea almost. Not that, yeah. not that, that people have sense. ill okay. will. Yeah, it's just, it's just that. No. Yeah, you have to be very attuned to like your own creative um, sensitivities. I can say mm -hmm. that it does take place in Iran again. It has nothing to do with okay. Arya. Like, um, there's okay. no connection. It does take okay. place in Iran, um, and it, yeah, it. I think. I think where Arya was sort of ex exploring sort of not fully, but to a large extent, sort of female experience, the, the w mm. women's experiences, if we're going to gender this thing, but I'm gendering it because mm. Iran is a very gendered culture in terms of right. people's positioning. Funnily enough, not the, the language isn't gendered. There's no gender in the language, but the behavior is very gendered. Right. Um, this, this one really looks at men and you know how men are supposed to be and um or the male the male so-called gender um okay so so th yeah that's the yeah and, and again it's I, I, and it's a much more painful experience than aria um because of the oh. subject matter it's very very difficult to write about and uh i'm oh. finding it very painful like i've had i've had oh. like nightmares <laughs> for the last two wow. two years year year and a half yeah yeah oh my goodness but you know i don't i don't want to deter readers i think it's a beautiful story yeah. <laughs> but like the what the characters are going through is very tricky and uh okay it, for as, as someone who's like in embodying and inhabiting those people it's mm -hmm. very uh it's difficult to it's difficult to deal with it's much more draining yeah sounds like when actors are um you know playing a very difficult character or a character who is traumatized in yeah. pain they yeah. say the same thing yeah. you know they kind of they feel it too so wow. yeah okay yeah. well i hope you're able to <laughs> yeah. kind of decompress from it when you stop writing or like yeah you, you do self-care i i know? watch a lot of like in between like sessions like when i have time i watch a lot of silly things to like good yeah that's good that sort helps. of yeah mock mock the world or whatever so right yeah <laughs> Well, Naz, listen, I am so excited to read this new book, even though I, I, I'm all about that kind of painful, dark stuff anyway, <laughs> okay. so that doesn't put me <laughs> off. But um, uh, yeah, I'm really excited to read it when, uh, when it's done. And um, thank you so much for joining us today. And yeah, best of luck with your writing. Take care of yourself, though. Okay, Thanks so thank much, you so much uh, for joining us. Thank you. It was great to talk to you. <laughs> my pleasure. I had a great time. Thank you, Ali. <laughs> me too. Okay. Cheers. Take care. Bye. Bye.